think the real question is this film took 12 years to shoot and how did you hold on to it over the 12 years how did uh, Richard keep everybody together and how did you not the crew so not the cast so much but the crew did, did that change and did your editing I was one of the few crew members that did all 12 years. I think there maybe was one or two other people that, that showed up every year for 12 years, but the film kind of drew everybody in. Everyone was so committed and passionate about it, and Rick is the kind of person who just engenders goodwill everywhere he goes, and people want to work with him. Um, for me, I worked every year for 12 years, he would shoot for three or four days and then I would come in for a month and, or three weeks or a month depending on how much money they had already spent that year. Um, and I really just tried to stay in the moment of that year and not really worry about what was coming next because honestly we didn't have a written script for the entire film. The script was all in his head. He knew where it was going to start and where it was going to end and he had islands of things that he knew he would touch on in those 12 years. But I didn't know what was in his head and he didn't really share it with me um, all at once. He kind of shared little tidbits. So my goal really was to just make each year resonate. And it wasn't that hard because I'm a mom of two kids and there were things that I saw with these children. I mean, they were non-actors. Eller had done a few commercials, I think, but essentially non-actors. But there were so many moments that resonated with me as a mom that I recognized that punch when he punches the pillow. I'm like, oh, I've seen Marshall do that like a thousand times. <laughs> um, so. There were things in the dailies that jumped out to me that felt real and true and honest. And those were the moments that I just kept mining and mining. And that kind of was my mantra throughout was to just keep it real. I mean, Linklater's films are grounded in reality, most of them. And that was my mantra to just find the real moments and put one foot in front of the other each year and then after about five or six years when we would screen the assembly of all of every year we would screen however many years we had I started to get a sense of what was going on I mean I really didn't under realize that the cumulative effect of all of those little tiny real seemingly inconsequential moments were going to build a life. Um, so it was an extraordinary experience, basically, and uh, my goal stylistically was to have it not look like 12 short films. So I was very conscious about stylistically keeping the editing style the same. And, and, and then you were talking about the steps. That you took over 11 years, and then in the 12th year, you went into a really big set with yes. putting it all together. I had to beg for post production time because the, it was so tightly budgeted, and there was really not money for us to have an extended post time. So, basically, for eight years, I was telling the producer, You know, at some point, we're gonna have to really edit the movie, I can't just cut for three weeks every year and then have it be a done, done deal. And so they were, they did plan for me to have extended time. The other thing was that there was an ongoing music project. Every year we would research the top songs of the year. We had lists and lists of genres of what dad would be listening to, what mom would be listening to, what the kids would be listening to. But Rick and I, that's not our generation of music. We, it was difficult for us to think that we were gonna be able to wisely select music that a kid would be responding to. So we did the research on all, all the songs and then we gave these lists of songs to 
some neighbor kids of mine and to some interns that were the same age as Eller would have been in those years. And we got notes. Rick asked for like a little paragraph about each song. And we would get responses like, I remember listening to that song as my mom would drive us to soccer practice. And my sister really loved that song, but all the guys hated it. Or, you know, things like that that were personal. So we, we used that as a guide of like what songs were speaking to that generation and tried to stay really authentic with that. So in the 12th year, I had 12 years of music research and, and we had basically not put any songs into the movie until the 12th year. We had the original songs that Ethan wrote so a lot of that last year was about building the sound track to the movie. And it did change, of course, with the clearances and all that. We had to switch a few things out, but that's how that came together. It's a remarkable uh, achievement. And I've never heard of 12 years of work on a film, <laughs> ever. And that's kind of wonderful. Um, so my question, my earlier question, because we're reaching the end of your section, um, how do you work with a director to get your point of view across if you're in a disagreement? I create multiple versions, and I'll, I will kind of keep my selected version uh, unannounced, and I'll screen multiple versions. Um, I'm a, a very persuasive in the cutting room, but I'm also a good listener. And I do try to, I'm not, I don't draw a line in the sand and say my version, your version. I really try to collaborate and find a, a meeting ground where he's happy and I'm happy. The director's happy and I'm happy. And so I create what I call combo cuts. So I'll have, you know, multiple versions and then I'll have the combo cuts. And, I, you know, I just feel like I have to be, I have to listen, I have to embrace the intent of whoever it is that I'm working with. And I think I'm pretty successful at that. And I'll tell you one story about, real quick, about why I found that line in the sand to be difficult. It, early on, one of the very first features that I cut, I, um, the director was Rip Torn, who is an actor that you may or may not know. And he was wild and crazy at that time. And um, he was directing this film. And I created a version that, of a reel that I thought was perfect. Like, I didn't want him to touch it. And I argued with him about it. And at one point, he stood up and he kind of screamed at me and he said, I said what I mean, and I mean what I say. And he turned around and he walked straight into the door and broke his glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and it kind of was startling. It scared the crap out of me. And um, I kind of realized that maybe that wasn't the approach to like, <laughs> creating an argument so that a director had to storm out of the room and break his glasses. <laughs> Very wise. <laughs> I mean, the first place, the band-aids and the bandages would not be in the budget. <laughs> so, 